Hi, welcome to this module and in the last module what we have seen? We have seen some cell and tissue culture techniques. Uh, so, uh, that is the title of this particular lecture uh, and we have seen what are kind of clean rooms and uh, how you can classify those clean rooms according to ISO standard, right. Uh, we have also seen that if it will be uh, nice to have a laboratory in which we have the same kind of uh, clean room environment. Uh, the reason being that uh, suppose it is a pharma uh, research, right, you want to test some drug. And if you go to a pharmacy where the drugs are tested, uh, the class of the clean room is class 10,000. So, if I want to test uh, the same drug uh, or a new drug in my laboratory uh, and give and, and generate a data and show that data to the pharma industry, they cannot replicate the same data, they cannot uh, uh, take the same data and immediately start pro production. They need to perform the same test again in their environment. So, if the environment is kept constant like class 100 or class 1000 or class 10,000 where both the experiments are performed, it is good for the validation. Having said that, uh, for the for once we have the fabricated sensors, once we have fabricated microchips, microfluidic devices, we want to test it for clinical research. So, when you talk about clinical research, we, we talk about biology and when we talk about biology, we talk about cell culture and tissue culture. That is why this, uh, this whole lecture is extremely important. Now, uh, uh, once you have the cells, once you have the tissues, once you have the devices, uh, how can you use this device or where should you use this device, right? Are there any equipment or are there any chemicals that are required uh, for performing cell culture or tissue culture? And uh, if the uh, cell is not infectious or it is infectious, what kind of stages or what kind of level uh, of equipment should be there for the research purpose. So, let us see uh, in today's uh, module uh, the equipment and chemicals required. Uh, now, you can see on the left side is a bio safety hood and uh, it consists of bio uh, it, it should have this biohazard label right since we are using if we are using uh, uh, a material which is hazardous uh, uh, there are handles for water and uh, for gas. Uh, then the new version of the BSL uh, bio safety hood comes up with a LCD display where you can monitor the uh, environment within the hood. Uh, there is a power lock uh, you, you can see clearly from this till this there is a complete glass right. So, you should only put the hands from this side that is it. It should be extremely, it is extremely important to take a precaution of not to put your head within the hood, right. Uh, th this, this equipment are meant for just pushing your hand and performing your experiment. There is a waterproof so socket and then there is a V type intake grill, which is right over here, V type you can see it here intake grill. Now, from user to user uh, to make the uh, uh, research comfortable and to, uh, uh, to for the, uh, the convenience of the user, uh, we have adjustable base stand. You can change the height of this base stand, okay. uh, uh, so that uh, uh, a researcher uh, uh, feels uh, convenient to work in this particular uh, environment. Now, when we talk about the class right, or level of the biosafety, we start from BSL 1 which is the base of this triangle and this BSL 1 are used for non pathogenic strains of E. coli. So, this is our the low risk microbes and as you go towards high risk microbes, the class or the safety changes. So, BSL 1 for non pathogenic strains of E. coli, BSL 2 for staph, BSL 3 for uh, tuberculosis, BSL 4 for Ebola and Marburg viruses. Now, biosafety hood or cabinet, this is where the primary tissues will be processed right here. 
to obtain the cell culture it is equipped with all precautionary features to eliminate contamination as well as hazard to the personal handling the tissue. The different essential parts of a biosafety hood are shown here we just talked about it right and uh, uh, the biosafety levels are different depending on the type of organism we are handling. Now, this is the uh, video this is a video uh, of how the biological safety cabinet uh, protects you and uh, uh, how uh, it also provides the protection to the laboratory workers product the product and the environment while reducing the risk of exposure right. So, through thoroughly understanding how a biosafety hood works while following established lab safety protocol will help or prevent contamination of your work and very important protect you at the same time right. Precaution is extremely important while performing experiments related to the pathogenic and non pathogenic even this non pathogenic the precaution is extremely important. So, let us play this video and let us see. This video demonstrates how biological safety cabinets work to protect you providing protection to laboratory workers product and the environment while reducing the risk of exposure. Thoroughly understanding how a biological safety cabinet works while following established lab safety protocols will help prevent contamination of your work and protect you at the same time. When used correctly, a properly installed and certified biological safety cabinet provides personnel, environmental, and product protection for work with biological materials including infectious agents and recombinant DNA. This video depicts a freestanding class 2 type A2 biological safety cabinet or BSC. It includes HEPA filters for exhaust and supply air, the work surface, the opening to the work surface, the airfoil, front and rear air intake grills, the plenum, the BSC's air filtration system works to keep potentially contaminated air from seeping back onto the worker. Air flows through the window opening into the front grill, through the plenum, then through the HEPA filters. 30% of the filtered air is exhausted. The remaining 70%, which is now HEPA filtered, is recycled back into the workspace. To ensure maximum protection in using a BSC, here are some essential reminders. 1. If the cabinet has been turned off, you must turn it on and wait at least 15 minutes before beginning your work. 2. Set up the interior workspace to work from clean to dirty and work consistently from one direction toward the other to prevent cross-contamination. 3. Place your chair at a comfortable height and in the middle of your workspace to ensure you can reach everything you need inside the cabinet without discomfort. Please keep in mind that you must work at least 10 centimeters inside the BSC. To guarantee uninterrupted airflow, cabinets should never be overcrowded. Overcrowding the BSC can block air grills. Airflow can also be disrupted by sudden or sweeping movements. Slow, direct movements work best. Too much foot traffic can cause problems as well and should be kept at a minimum. If pedestrians are unavoidable, keep people at least one meter from your BSC. And remember to check nearby doors or supply vents to determine if they disrupt the cabinet's airflow. When you have completed your work, any reusable items should be wiped down with disinfectant before removing them from the BSC. Next, the interior surfaces of the BSC should be decontaminated using the appropriate disinfectant for a contact time recommended for the agent used. To be sure, 
a second decontamination is advisable. In summary, there are a small number of best practices to follow in using a biological safety cabinet. Let's go over them one last time. Work at least 10 centimeters inside of the BSC. Do not block front and rear grills. Too many objects in the BSC can disrupt the airflow. Set up workspace in a direction from clean to dirty. Use slow, direct movements. Minimize foot traffic within one meter of the BSC. Placement of the BSC away from doors and room air supply vents helps maintain airflow. Thank you for watching and stay safe. Now, let us see equipment and chemicals required, we, we are still in the same uh, topic and you can see here uh, important thing which is your CO2 incubator. Hmm. So, if you see the human uh, body, what, what is the temperature of uh, our body about 37 degree centigrade, what is humidity 95 percent RH relative humidity and how much CO2 concentration about 5 percent CO2 right. This is how our body is. So, if I want to use the cells or if I want to grow the cells outside the body that is in vitro right inside the body in vivo outside the body in vitro right in vitro I am growing the cells ok. I am not using anything from the body I am just uh, if I am using a tissue from the body is ex vivo we, we know this very well right. So, I have to grow cells in the laboratory and that is why it is a in vitro, in vitro platforms. So, to grow the cells in a controlled environment we require CO2 incubator and the parameters of CO2 incubators are similar to our body temp body parameters like 37 degree centigrade, 95 percent RH, 5 percent CO2 concentration. This is the core equipment of any tissue culture lab. Any tissue culture lab in the lab in the in the world you will see a CO2 incubator. It gives a control over contamination which is a major issue in tissue culture methods. See if there is a bacterial contamination in, in the cells, cells will start dying. So, to have a controlled environment we load the cells uh, either in petri dish or a T 75 flask or a T 25 flask along with the media you can see here T 75 flask with media. You can see here petri dish with media and of course, there are cells right. So, cells media and it is a T 75 flask this is a these are petri dish these are loaded into the incubator and this incubator has 37 degree centigrade 5 percent CO2 and 95 percent relative humidity. You can see we are handling the uh, uh, the cells right we by wearing the gloves right to avoid any contamination. Since it is class 10,000 the the gowning requirement the 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 gowning requirement is different than class 1000 is different than class 100, but the 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 protection is very important. So, still we have to wear glass we have to wear the lab gown and then we have to use gloves ok. So, the the incubator size varies from table tops to those that can fill an entire small room. 
some incubators can even be programmed to cycle through different temperature and humidity levels. Okay. So, uh, based on the type of research you will find different kind of incubators, but in general a uh, incubator is an equipment to uh, which will help your cells to sustain and grow in a controlled environment. Now, let us see a next slide. Next slide would be a refrigerator. What is refrigerator? For loading liquid media and growth factors which can be maintained at 4 degree centigrade and you will see this equipment uh, as a part of the uh, experiment that you will be uh, uh, laboratory training you will be shown how the uh, refrigerator for media uh, and growth factors looks like, how the incubator looks like. Okay. So, just not just uh, looking at the slides here, but to actually see how the system looks like. Okay. So, uh, you will be shown this uh, refrigerator and liquid media and growth factors uh, maintained are maintained at 4 degree centigrade enzymes such as trypsin and media components like glutamine, serum etcetera are at minus 20 degree centigrade. Now, the one that you will be shown is at 4 degree centigrade, but there are refrigerators for minus 20 degree centigrade as well. Now, tissue culture plastics are flask. 96 well plate you can see here this is 96 well plate 48 well plate 24 well plate 12 well plate 6 well plate these are these are actually 6 well plate you can see 6 well 12 well uh, 24 this is 96 so and then there are battery dishes etc right this will be treated with a polystyrene so all these things are treated with polystyrene and then you have flask you can see here T 75 flask T 25 flask. Okay. So, uh, these are the flask for uh, handling your cells and growing your cells in a controlled environment. Now, when you talk about talk about equipment you cannot miss microscope. Generally, in a uh, clinical research setting, you will find microscope which are inverted microscope, and you can see here that there is a room for petri dish or tissue culture flask which you can keep here. The objectives are at the bottom, the condensator is at the top, and of course, the light source is uh, at the top of the condensator. Now, the inverted microscope is used inside tissue culture room to look at the status of the cells that are being cultured and different magnifications are possible of course, using the objective lens uh, from 10 x to 20 x to 40 x to 100 x etcetera. We use the microscope to see if the cells have become confluent, we have seen the word confluent in the earlier module right and how the health status of the cells is and when exactly to passage the cells right. We have seen what is passaging correct. Inverted microscope is a better access for imaging of the live cells. So, you can see here the some of the images taken using the inverted microscope you can clearly see uh, cells. In some cases there are, uh, uh, there are fibers in some cases there are cells depending on what you are uh, focusing on right. So, inverted microscope is extremely important for uh, cell culture and tissue culture application in a controlled environment that is about a biology lab, also a tissue culture lab, also uh, in any clinics okay, in a pathology. So, uh, see the, uh, when we talk about pathology or clinical applications or medicine or pharma uh, you see uh, the, the, the base is still a biology and chemistry. Right. When you talk about any engineering, the base still remains physics. So, it is very important physics and math, right. So, it is very important that we, we have our base clear, the fundamentals clear. If I talk about a sensor that is a strain gauge, you should know what is strain gauge, what is strain, what is stress, what is gauge factor. Then you come to uh, fabricating a device. So, fundamentals are very important. Same thing when you want to learn uh, application of medical 
uh, electronics or uh, how can you how can you design a biomedical tool for a clinical research first thing you should learn is a basic biology right chemistry if that is good if that is strong it's easy to apply your uh, engineering knowledge and merge it with biology for some clinical research right so uh, let's go to the next slide and next slide is of course uh, extremely important equipment and that is your autoclave why it's so important because it is used to sterilize the equipment kill the infectious bacteria kill the pathogens which are left over after our experiment we cannot just discard these slides we cannot just throw the slide in a in a in a garbage can no even is biohazard bags we require biohazard bags to discard the uh, in vitro platforms which on which we have performed the experiments right so we can just not discard these platforms directly into biohazard bags for sure we cannot discard in a uh, in a in a garbage can which is not which which doesn't have any biohazard uh, bags so but before discarding in biohazard we should go for autoclaving because autoclaving will kill the uh, remaining pathogens remaining bacteria uh, if there are any and also will help to sterilize the equipment if you want to reuse the equipment you have to first sterilize the equipment now if you have if you know that uh, generally it, it was advisable and still it is advisable to boil the water before we drink. Why to boil the water? So that the contaminants will be burned, will die. If there is any contaminant in the water will die. To boil the water, filter the water and then drink, right. Same way boiling that means heating something at a higher temperature in terms of boiling is so water in here we are we are using again a water and we are loading our uh, equ uh, our uh, equipment or utensils that are used for tissue culture or for or uh, cell culture and tissue culture and cell culture are interrelated uh, and uh, thus we are sterilizing it because we are removing any contaminants uh, any leftover contaminants right so if you see an autoclave uh, is used to sterilize the equipment utensils etc that are used for tissue culturing both for reuse and safe disposal even if you want to dispose it you have to autoclave it it is like a high tech pressure cooker it removes microorganisms like virus bacteria fungus spores etc using high pressure and high pressure high temperature steam sterilization right so again autoclave uh, uh, comes as an ex and, uh, as an important equipment in the biology setting you will see a autoclave in the laboratory uh, an actual autoclave how it looks like now let us go to the next slide next slide is micro manipulator now see this may not, you may not see in uh, all the bio settings okay but this is extremely important equipment since it can be used for indenting tissues it can be used to understand indenting cells even right since the indenter uh, the the micro manipulator can have can be operated in a step as small as a micron right uh, it is an extremely important equipment to have in a laboratory for understanding the tissue property for example the the uh, lecture in which we have studied the electrical thermal and mechanical properties of tissue how did we study we had a uh, uh, indenter loaded connected to a micro manipulator and a micro manipulator used to go down in a z direction and press the tissue and it was pressing the tissue right with a micron force my micron uh, uh, dimensions right or micron steps force we can know only when we have a, a load cell to connected to the indenter but we were indenting the tissue we are pressing the tissue with a micron dimensions micron size micron steps there are many other applications now you can see the same thing we were using when we were using a flexible force sensor you remember flexible force sensor with a strain gauge that strain gauge was made up out made out of a made out of p dot pss 
right conducting polymer. So, we had this conducting polymers to engage over which we had an insulator on which we had SU8 pillars and we made it conducting we loaded it with the 3D printed cone and the 3D printed cone was connected to the micro manipulator again. So, micro manipulator comes as a handy equipment uh, for understanding the tissue property in, uh, in, the, in, in this particular area uh, where you want to use your engineering devices to understand how the uh, properties of our tissue changes as cancer progresses. Now, still we are focusing on a particular disease that is cancer. So, if the cancer is at, uh, if, if the tissue is normal and if there is a progress in the tissue, for example, ductal carcinoma in situ, invasive ductal carcinoma or lobular carcinoma in situ, invasive lobular carcinoma. So, normal benign lobular carcinoma in situ, lobular uh, uh, invasive lobular carcinoma, this is a one stage, right. Or we can say of normal benign uh, ductal carcinoma uh, uh, in situ and invasive uh, ductal carcinoma. This is another line right where the cancer is in duct, cancer is in lobes. So, these are stages. So, if I want to know the stages of the cancer, if I know the stages or progression of the disease, if I can uh, correlate this progression with the parameters uh, that I can obtain such as electrical mechanical thermal, it can be other parameters like pH right it can be other parameters as well. Uh, uh, so, the point is uh, to obtain this parameter we require micro manipulator. One way, one way to test this uh, tissue is using the micro manipulator. There can be n number of ways, it depends on how the researcher want to uh, uh, use his research for understanding the properties of the uh, tissue. So, this is from the shutter equipment you can see here this we have bought in our laboratory and you will be able to see how the micro manipulator, micro manipulator looks like and uh, 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 the equipment like uh, it is written here is physically uh, used to physically interact with the sample under study preferably under a microscope using specially designed needles mechanical forces with high precision and accuracy can be applied can see here needles and micro indenters uh, to the sample and this response can be studied using sensors placed below. The system is used to study the stiffness and material properties of a biological tissue in a engineering lab setup which is biomedical engineering. The control unit helps define the exit step size x y z. So, it is not only used for z moments, it can also be used for x and y moments and of course, it can be programmable, it can be programmable for uh, definite time steps, right. So, micro manipulator is an, uh, is an equipment that can be used for studying the tissue. Let us go to the next one and next one is the microtome. What is microtome? Microtome is a tool used to cut extremely thin slices of material called sections. Okay. So, let us say that we have the tissue obtained from biopsy right and then we want to test I S this is immunohistochemistry we need to have a thin slice of tissue which we will stain and we will understand whether a particular biomarker is present or not right. So, we have to slice this tissue to slice this tissue there is an equipment called microtome okay. and uh, so, this, this tissues uh, are sliced and what is the use of it? So, once the tissues are sliced it allows the preparation of samples which can be used for observation under light or electron microscopy and also for tissue culturing. The, the method itself is called microtomy okay. the, the process the method that is used to slice the tissue is called microtomy. The section thickness can go as low as 50 nanometer. Okay, and with an average section being of 100 micron in thickness. Okay. So, uh, generally tissues are sliced at 100 microns, it can go as low as 50 nanometer microtome or tissue slicing It's also called grossing, we can gross the device, we can gross the tissue. Right. So, if you see the uh, video, uh, this is from the uh, oxy lab. Uh, and here we will see how the microtome can be used. So, let us see first video and then let us go to the next slide.
centrifuge. Hmm? What is this equipment? Centrifuge is the equipment used to concentrate the cell suspensions and remove the supernatant. The equipment has controls to set required RPM and time of rotation. We can insert multiple falcon tubes. You can see here there are falcon tubes right inserted at the same time and here is a sample video uh, of how it is operated is shown. Now, in this particular uh, section in this particular uh, uh, image right the role of centrifuge is suppose I load in a falcon tube a, a sample let us say a blood blood. Okay. So, what will happen if I centrifuge it the, the blood will be the bottom there will be RBCs in the center there will be WBCs on the top there will be plasma you can separate the uh, heavy material from the lighter material with the help of centrifuge. In another case if I have a cells in PBS and if I want to wash the cells multiple times I will load the cells with PBS in a falcon tube centrifuge it. So, the cells will go down and I can throw the supernatant which is the which is the liquid PBS that is on the top I can throw it load another PBS and again centrifuge it again throw it. So, as you can do washing steps this is one example of how to use centrifuge. You can separate a blood like I said if you load the blood and if you centrifuge it at a certain RPM then what will happen the heavier cells will come at the bottom the lighter cells will come at the top and such the layers are formed. So, we have RBCs, WBCs and plasma you can separate these three things out uh, this is another way of using the centrifuge. So, if you see the video you will understand how the centrifuge is used right. Executive Series Centrifuge is the newest addition to the elite product line of MSight Global Biologics. And taking advantage of all aspects of superior separation, the Executive Series Centrifuge comes fully equipped. A high performing machine with an enhanced look and smaller footprint is now here. When looking at the Executive Series Centrifuge, you will first notice its large multifunction buttons and clear display. To the left is the time button where you will turn the dial to set the time and press start and stop centrifugation. To the right you will find the speed button which also can be turned to set the RPM speed and press to toggle between the RCF and RPM display. These buttons are clear and easy to operate. Centrifuge comes with the control deceleration and soft braking feature. This minimizes cell agitation and resuspension during processing. Optimized separation is achieved without activation, providing the best achievable cell concentration for your procedure. To activate this feature, Press and hold the short button until you see the BR off indicated on the display. This machine has an automatic lock and release function for lid operation. To open the lid, power up the machine and press the open button. You can manually open the lid without AC power by releasing the pull string at the base of the machine where you can pull it to open. The lid automatically locks when closed. Looking inside, you will find that the machine comes with the proprietary rotor and two customizable swinging buckets. These buckets are designed to swing horizontally, then smoothly present to a full vertical position when completed. This prevents the buffy coat from resuspending into the plasma and prevents the platelet slip phenomenon which degrades the quality of the final product. With these new concepts in platelet and bone marrow separation, 
the executive series centrifuge now makes its mark as it enhances the quality of these products. Okay. So, let us go to the next slide and next slide is cryo vials. What are cryo vials? Cryo vials. These are specialized vessels designed for storing biological material, human or animal cells as temperature as low as minus 196 degrees centigrade. They should be used only in gas phase of liquid nitrogen. You see, they should be used only in gas phase of liquid nitrogen. These vials will be used for cryopreservation to preserve the uh, cells for longer time, which is a process by which biological material like cells, tissue or even organs and organelles uh, within the cells susceptible to damage caused by unregulated chemical kinetics are preserved by cooling at very low temperature. Uh, this causes the unregulated biological activity to almost cease. right? So, if the cells are going to uh, get affected, uh, they are susceptible to the da to damage caused by unregulated chemical kinetics then or biological activity, then what we can do? We can preserve it at a very low temperature such as minus 180 degree centigrade. Uh, typically, minus 80 degree centigrade can be used for solid carbon or minus 196 for liquid nitrogen. Now, uh, using this what happens? Unregulated biological activity to al uh, almost ceases and so that our material can be preserved for later use. The process of bringing the cells and other materials to viable uh, use from cryopreservation is called thawing. Thawing, thawing is nothing but heating. Hmm? Thawing. So these are thio valves in which you can uh, load the cells and you can preserve it for longer time. Hmm? Uh, uh, these images are taken from Sigma Aldrich. So Sigma Aldrich is a company which makes the uh, there are a lot of companies, but uh, these are the some of the images uh, uh, and uh, these are the cryo valves as you can see in the figure uh, of different uh, volume. You can say 1.2 ml, 2 ml, 4 ml, 5 ml right. So, uh, these are the another uh, set of uh, tools or equipment that you can know or a, or a preservation uh, vessel that is there in the biology environment. Now, the most important thing is to give the nutrition to the cell, so the cell can stay longer time without any uh, significant effect. So, cells would not die right. So, to preserve the cell we use something called media. Hmm? In our body blood provides nutrition to the or to the all the cells right. So, necessary nutrition and other things are provided by the blood. However, cells have complex nutritional requirement and that must be met in the in the body it is met, but in the in vitro platform this is met with the help of media. Now, earlier people use chick embryo extracts, plasma, sera etcetera as a growth media but they varied in their growth promoting characteristics and hence they affected <laughs> the reproducibility of the experiments all right so using this uh, earlier techniques like sera or embryo growth factors right extracts plasma uh, they can all th these all things were tried earlier uh, however what is the problem the consistency and the reproducibility uh, uh, in the growth promoting factors these were the problems so, what happened? Now, you can see here that today a number of chemical defined formulations are available that supports the consistent and reproducible growth of several primary and secondary cell lines uh, and some of these chemicals are Eagle basal media, Eagle minimum essential media EMEM. Uh, uh, then there is another one which is Dalbeco's modify essential media, this is DMEM uh, which is extremely widely used generally in the laboratory you will find DMEM. Uh, ISCOs modified double echoes medium IMDM finally, there is HEMS F12 uh, media. There are several other medias, but, uh, but these are the basic uh, uh, most frequently used medias in this also uh, in these also uh, the number 3 which is DMEM is widely used. So, what are the various nutrition? So, when I say uh, there are the nutrition is provided by the blood what are the nutrition? Nutrition are glucose, fat, fats, fatty acid, lipids, phospholipids right 
uh, sulfophospholipids uh, uh, as well as ATP and amino acids. Uh, it can be vitamins, minerals and also sometimes antibiotics to prevent the growth of unwanted micro, microorganisms. So, these are all the, uh, the nutritions when we talk about nutritions there are several nutritions like we just discussed. So, this all the combination of all the nutritions are there in the media and that is why the cell can sustain for a, a longer period of time. So, let us come back to the uh, slide. Another major constitution of media is serum. So, what is the role of serum? It provides growth factors, hormones, cell adhesion factors because the cell has to adhere to the base of the T75 flask or a tissue culture flask and other essentials required by the mammalian cells for their long term growth and metabolism. Some common serums are FBS, FCS, CS, HS and HOS. Uh, now, another point is the pH, the pH should be between 7.2 to 7.4 uh, for the mammalian cells to survive. Right? So, phenol red is used as an internal indicator as the cell consumes the nutrition. So, if this, this nutrition if you, if you uh, load the cell right load the cell and load the nutrition on the cell which is your DMEM the phenol red is added as an internal indicator. What does that mean? That as the cell consumes the nutrition this red color uh, changes to uh, uh, changes to yellowish or uh, light brown in color you got it. So, initially it is red and as the cell grows and consumes the uh, nutrition from the media the color of this media changes from red to yellow or golden golden color or light brown color. Okay. This changes the color of solution and gives an indication to change when to media. So, when you see this you have the indication that the, the nutrition from the media has been consumed by the cell and it is time to change the media. Right. So, this is how the tissue culture process flow is that uh, if, you, if you go here let us, let us see here uh, right side tissue explants are excised using a sharp scalpel and then mechanical disruption by pestle or mortar right. This we have also seen in the drug screening device right. Then the filter using 0 0.22 micro filter using a syringe then enzymatic di digestion by tricin uh, it can be trypsin or collagenase uh, cells are accounted uh, these are counted on hemocytometer right. Uh, and then 5 ml of cell is suspended in 25 uh, centimeter square flask, the flasks are incubated in CO2 incubator, flasks are observed daily for the normal growth, media is changed every 2 to 3 days, still the cell attains 80 percent confluency. Right? So, this is the process flow of a tissue culture. Now, if you go further in detail then this is how it up, uh, occurs which is in your left side that you have the isolation of tissue then there is a dissection sex selection of required tissue removal of fatty and necrotic cells and then it goes for fine dissection can go for mechanical disaggregation or can go for enzymatic disaggregation. Right. If you talk about mechanical uh, fine uh, dissection is chopping down uh, to explant size primary explant explant and then transfer to a secondary explant culture if it is outgrowth it can go to subculture and to the cell line. If a mechanical way of disaggregation that uh, like syringing vigorous pipetting sieving then after that it is dispersed primary culture subculture to the cell line. While enzymatic way of disaggregation is scold trypsin, warm trypsin, collagenase. So, for cold trypsin we have to put it overnight in cold short incubation. This warm trypsin is long incubation and then we have to repeat sampling while the collagenase is long incubation complete medium and then it has to be centrifuge. This has to be directly go to the resuspend and seed and then goes to the dispersed primary culture followed by subculture and cell line. Right. So, this is how the tissue uh, culture uh, process flow is uh, there. Now, other important processes are carried out such as subculturing and cryopreservation. So, if it is a subculturing how it is done. Okay. So, remove suspend media from the culture well or vessel then add pre warmed dis, uh, dissociation reagent such as trypsin gently rock the container to completely cover the entire layer. 
right, which is cell layer. Then you have to incubate the vessel at room temperature for approximately 2 minutes, followed by adding equivalent 2 volumes of pre warmed complete growth media. Disperse the media by pipetting the cell over the cell layer, then split the cell into 2 to 3 flasks containing complete media, and then you have to incubate the cell. So, this is uh, more of a uh, subculturing process. You can see this uh, in, a, in a YouTube video, just write subculturing and you will understand how it is done. Same way goes for cryopreservation. Once the uh, uh, the uh, the growth medium is removed, we have to wash the cell by PBS and then remove PBS by aspiration, followed by dissociation dissociation of the cells by trypsin, which is called trypsinization. Finally, uh, after that, it is uh, diluting the cells with growth media. Then centrifuge it at 200 gra uh, gram for five minutes at uh, uh, room temperature and remove the growth media by aspiration. Final and uh, next uh, step would be resuspending the cells in one to two ml. Uh, of freezing medium containing DMSO uh, and then transferring the cell to cryo valves, uh, incubate the cryo valves at minus 80 degree overnight followed by uh, transferring the cryo valves to liquid nitrogen right. So, this is how the cryo preservation works right. So, uh, uh, if you want to do subculturing you have to uh, follow a particular process, if you want to do cryo preservation you have to perform another process right. So, what are the application of tissue culture? Right. So, let us see what are the application of tissue culture. A tissue culture system is an excellent model, excellent model for studying normal physiology, cell biology and biochemistry of cells. Okay. So, a tissue culture can be used for studying normal physiology, cell biology and biochemistry. Now, what we were looking at is the physiology of the tissue, we are also looking at the biology of the tissue or cells, where so if you if you recall immunotherapy, we were understanding how CD4, CD8 concentration changes. If you recall uh, electrothermomechanical properties, we were understanding the physiology of the tissue. For a bioengineering lab, it provides flexibility in experimenting with varying engineering parameters that are used to design the sensors, which will finally use primary biological tissues, correct? We have used it. It can be used to study the effect of drugs, we have seen right drug screening, radiation, toxic components on the cells and tissue. This can be done either through conventional biological protocol based assay or through microengineering devices like microfluidics, MAMS, micro electromechanical systems, nano electromechanical systems, etcetera. Hmm. It can also be used for studying mutagenesis and carcinogenesis, whether it is carcinogenic or not. Or uh, and then tissue culture systems are also widely employed in industry for large scale manufacturing components like biological origins like vaccines, insulin, interferon and other therapeutic proteins. So, uh, the, the application of tissue culture is really really wide not only for understanding the uh, properties, but also for, uh, for creating new vaccines uh, and therapeutic and in therapeutics. Right, so that's the important of tissue culture. Let us see advantages hmm, quickly. It gives good control of the environment. The advantages of tissue culture, okay? Characterization and homogenization of sample is possible. It's economical. Its scale and me mechanization is also uh, possible. In vitro modeling and in vivo conditions uh, we can study by 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 taking the cells from the uh, body and placing it in the uh, in the device that we have created uh, in the laboratory and studying it further. Then there are limitations, what are the limitations of the tissue culture? The limitation of the tissue culture are culturing techniques need a great deal of expertise. Tissue sample consists of mixture of heterogeneous cell populations. Right. See, culturing techniques it requires a great deal of expertise, but once you know it becomes easier. Continuous growing of cells often exhibit genetic instability, right. So, you cannot use many uh, uh, time the cells, you cannot just keep on regrowing it. Difference in the behavior of cells in culture and natural form, that is another point. Finally, should be include proper balance of hormones. So, these are few limitations of the tissue culture technique. Right. So, uh, this is the end of this particular module and uh, end of this particular class. 
and uh, uh, just go through this technique. I do not want to go in depth about uh, tissue culture and cell culture, but this was the kind of information of how the uh, cells are preserved and grown in the lab environment. There can be another uh, thing where the spheroids are grown from the cells, the organoids are taken out from the tissues there are several techniques right. Then you can see that how you can uh, uh, make mesenchymal cells and how you can have epithelial cells. So, if you go into cell culture and tissue culture in depth there are a lot of things to understand. What we are interested in is let us get the uh, glimpse of how the biology lab looks like and what parameters we should learn so that or we should understand so that we can create a device, we can manufacture a device that can be used to solve a problem existing in clinics that is a clinical problem. For example, we, we talked about immunotherapy, we talked about drug screening right. Now, uh, in the next uh, class, we will be talking about an uh, extremely important uh, problem and that is called uh, anti uh, uh, or it is called bacterial resistance. Let us, let us put it in this way, bacterial resistance. Right. So, bacteria is resistant to what? Bacteria is resistant to antibiotics. How we would know or how you can devise uh, a, a technology that can be used to understand whether a particular bacteria would be resistant to antibiotic or not. That means, antibiotic can be effective to kill the bacteria or not. If not, then that antibiotic should not be given to the patient. So, are not there any techniques available right now? There are. But those techniques takes about 24 to 48 hours. So, we will see how an engineering approach to solve this particular issue of time, time taken to capture and uh, to grow and to understand the resistance of the, of the bacteria can be reduced from this 24 to 48 hours down to 2 to 3 hours. And I will tell you in that lecture why it is so important right. Till then just look at this module, I will see you in the next lecture, bye.